what have Charles Darwin and his theory of evolution contributed to humanity? Coming up, the true legacy of Darwinism. Your morality is whatever you want to make it to be. That's really Darwin's legacy. Perhaps the most pernicious and destructive manifestation of social Darwinism was in what happened in Nazi Germany. Ironically, there is no concrete evidence for evolution. I think we can say that quite emphatically. It's more in the minds of men than it is actually, in fact, out there in nature. We keep hearing about gaps in the theory of evolution. The whole theory is a gap. Coral Ridge Ministries presents Darwin's Deadly Legacy, a shocking look at the historical impact of the theory of evolution and the shaky scientific ground on which it rests. In 1859, Charles Darwin published his bombshell book entitled On the Origins of the Species, in which he laid out the foundation for the view that mankind and all other species evolved through a purely random physical process. The world has never been the same since. This view is now mandated as the official view in all public education institutions. But have you ever thought about the social impact of Darwin's theory of evolution? It has been enormous. Evolution permeates virtually every aspect of our culture. Pick up a book or read a magazine or watch a television program or a movie and you will see the assumption of evolution. Here's a sampling. Evolution is supported by the entire scientific community. Intelligent design is supported by guys online to see the Dukes of Hazard. Sometimes it seems hard to avoid being indoctrinated about evolution, whether on TV or the radio. Among scientists, Darwin's theory of evolution is the accepted understanding, grounded now in many years of research and deep evidence, of how the multitude of living things came to be. The idea is promoted in newspapers and magazines and books. Everywhere, evolution is just assumed. Creation scientist Ian Taylor. Evolution permeates our entire society, not surprisingly because it's taught in the public schools. And most children in North America go to a public school. And evolution is promoted in Hollywood films. I think Darwinism is popular as a story because it allows atheists not to have to explain why we're here. Ann Coulter, author of the New York Times number one book, Godless. There's no such thing as morality. There's no such thing as, as our consciousness of our mortality. Um, we're about one step above a porpoise, although many of them seem to believe we're below a porpoise because we have nukes and we pollute <laughs> and have hate crimes and, and don't recycle. <laughs> so we are below a porpoise, but, but it's just a matter of, it's just random mutation in this bloody battle of survival, which exists no place in the fossil record. The late Dr. Stephen Jay Gould of Harvard said, Man, or even woman, as the crowning achievement of some grand cosmic plan? What moral conceit! We are but an afterthought. We are a little accidental twig. It has been said that ideas have consequences. That is so true, as we'll see in this program. We're being told today that life is just the product of time and chance and random forces well if we've just evolved from the primeval slime then humanity sinks in significance darwin's second major book was rightly titled the descent of man where man was no longer viewed as a little lower than the angels but rather a little higher than the apes what Darwin theorized about biology was applied by later thinkers to society, economics, and government, with devastating consequences. 
The acceptance of evolution brought in a totally new way of looking at life on Earth, and especially humankind and our place in the cosmos. As evolution began to be accepted in intellectual circles, one of their own, British philosopher Herbert Spencer coined the phrase, survival of the fittest. That phrase caught on as the essence of Darwinism. Social Darwinism is the idea that uh, human beings will evolve and social systems will evolve and social institutions will evolve and the fit ones will survive and overcome the weak ones and go on to become stronger. It is a survival of the fittest sort of system. It is a dog-eat-dog, -dog, top dog went out kind of system that uh, flies in the face of the Judeo-Christian tradition. Dr. Earl Tilford, Jr. is a professor of history at Grove City College in Pennsylvania. So, with survival of the fittest, it was okay to exploit people. After all, they were weak and they uh, should go by the wayside. It was for the betterment of the race, of the human race, that they should. Intellectually uh, deficient, those who are physically deficient, those who are morally deficient, would fall away. Evolution had implications for virtually every discipline it touched, including labor. Ian Taylor, author of In the Minds of Men, Darwin and the New World Order, mentions the so-called robber barons, a handful of industrialists who became inordinately wealthy by unethical means in the early stages of capitalism. They were enthusiastic Darwinists. There was a lot of um, misuse of uh, labor in England at that time, and it was all justified by the robber barons, uh, by Darwin's argument, a survival of the fittest. Well, the elite said, we are the fittest and we're surviving. And it's perfectly all right. It's for the benefit of the country, isn't it? In America, it was the late 1800s, early 1900s, when you found the robber barons. Andrew Carnegie and others believed that this was all justified. The idea of um, encouraging unemployment so that the wages could, keep, could be kept low and the hours, the working hours, could be kept long and so that they could make maximum profit on these things. That was survival of the fittest. And, of course, he would have been one of the fittest to survive. Evolution also has had implications on racism. It gave it a scientific rationale. The biblical view is that racism is wrong, not that all followers of the Bible have lived up to its teaching. Specifically, the book of Acts in chapter 17 verse 26 teaches that from one man came all men. Thus we are all ultimately related. There is no basis for racism. But here again, Darwinism is at odds with the Bible. Now, a lot of people might not connect Darwinian evolution with racism, but as the late uh, Dr. Stephen Jay Gould said, uh, that r racist attitudes were common uh, before Darwin, but what Darwin did was fuel racism. And the reason is because when you popularize a philosophy that man is just an animal and we evolved from ape-like ancestors and there are different races that evolved at different levels and some are more advanced than others, uh, you can see how people could then uh, develop racist attitudes towards those they thought were more primitive than themselves or inferior to themselves. And there's no doubt that Darwinian evolution has certainly influenced cultures around the world. Creationist educator Ken Ham, founder and director of Answers in Genesis, saw what Darwinism did to the Aborigines in his native country of Australia. Darwin taught in his book The Descent of Man, for instance, Australian Aborigines were basically closest to the ape-like ancestors. Australian Aborigines uh, were looked on as the missing links in history in, in the very early 1900s. They were even listed as animals in a Sydney Museum booklet. And there were scientists from Germany and England who sent people to Australia with instructions on how to, how to kill the Aborigines, how to skin them, how to boil up their skulls for specimens for museums around the world. It was because they thought these were not quite human yet. It was all, all laid down with the idea of they were evolving, and they had not yet evolved into uh, the white man's idea of what is being human, see? 